Hey kids and coaches. Um, so I thought I would do another video. I not another outing video. Um, probably gonna be a couple more weeks before I can manage to do that. But of the Alice pack, um, I always use it and I've never really went into detail about it or what's in it. So I thought I would go ahead and do a quick video on that. We'll try to make it quick and show you guys what some of the features are. Um, kind of why it's so great, I guess, or why I like it. Um, then if you've never seen one up close, maybe you've been looking at one, you can think about going to get one. So, yeah. So Alice Pack came in two different sizes, the actual Alice Packs. Um, there's a medium and a large. This is a medium Alice Pack. I like this one better. I've never actually owned a large, but I've never felt that I needed, I guess, that capacity because they are enormous. Um, these were used primarily dates I found was 73 to 97 I know they went a little um, later than that they kept using them they didn't get completely phased out I think until the early 2000s we started using Molly stuff and other gear um, but these were a big thing in Vietnam War and other wars as well and people still carry them obviously people camp and bushcrafters people like that like to carry them like myself for many reasons so we'll kind of get into that but yeah, just a quick little little history on that from about the 70s to the early 70s, late 90, 90s, I guess. <laughs> Not the 1900s. <laughs> okay, so getting into it. Um, on the outside, we have three pockets. There's three pockets on the outside of this that you could put various gear in. Maybe it's something you wanted to get to quicker. Um, I put the hatchet in here just to show you the pass-through. There's a pass-through that is on each of these pockets, so you can stick a tool down in either, or any of them, any three of them, have the pass-through. So that's another reason that it's good for, for camping. People in bushcrafting like to carry their, their tools on the outside, but this isn't about the uh, that gear. Each of the three pockets are held in place by these two buttons. If you wanted to, you know, maybe do it a little less tight, you could just do the one button and it'd pop off easier, but they're, st they're still really strong buttons. Um, they do have a pass-through loop here on the back so you can grab there and pull so you can kind of anchor it before you pull it open. They are adjustable with metal keepers on the top that you can adjust these straps. I kind of keep them where they're at. Um, and then if you really need to blow them out to make them taller, you can do that, but they're pretty roomy I've just got some st stuff in here just to fill the pack out like there's an Nalgene 32 ounce Nalgene and it is Plenty of room left over in there for other things Then when you want there's no zippers or Anything like that to break and that was part of the reason for it being so tough So there's three of those on the outside Go ahead and flip it over here before we get into the inside so they do have um, a kidney belt kidney pad you don't have to have one of these on it it's only if you have the frame the medium Alice can be ran with the frame or without it um, sometimes I prefer it without it I feel like the frame kind of pushes into the bag and takes up some room in there and it's obviously heavier it's an aluminum frame you can also so you can run it with or without it these straps are currently attached to the frame but in the other configuration they attach to loops that are on the top you can see those on the bag so you can run it both ways you don't need the frame it's just for carrying heavier loads waist belt is not like your standard um, backpacking ones now it is kind of thin but it was made for military and it's just a kind of a kidney pad I have mine adjusted looser in the back these little fast text buckles are adjustable so that way it'll kind of curve into the frame a little bit and kind of hug me and then the front has these thick heavy duty nylon and um, these Nexus fast X buckles and then you can adjust this way so usually if I'm not using it I'll take that and actually flip it around and have it connected behind it so it doesn't get in my way as much move on to the shoulder straps um, these are LC2 style shoulder straps they have LC1s are the original and they're pretty short they're actually about this tall I've, I actually have a set somewhere in storage um, they were a lot thinner these are a lot thicker uh, from what I've heard is that when these first came out with these LC2 they were more of a special forces got them and everybody wanted them and if you knew a buddy and you could get a set 
that was really what you wanted to wanted to be able to do there so these connect through the top they're adjustable up here they're supposed to connect this way with the tabs up these were a lot longer when I got it but I cut them down after I got it fitted to how I wanted it so I would have a little bit of play left but not a ton that was on purpose they do have these little grab strings here that you can use to pull and loosen these up if we move down they have a um, sternum strap is also adjustable that's like your any standard backpack and then both sides have a quick disconnect on them so if you need to get out of this really quick you can you got a bunch of weight it helps and you have weight in it these actually pop and if you pull on it um, those will pop off whenever you're holding it and the weight will pull those out and then that just comes apart so you can dump your pack like let's say you got submerged and you needed to dump it really quick but they're real easy to put back on everything's metal just slides over slides down through there and then you button it to secure it you can hear the buttons they're really stout but that's both sides of them that was to make it a a quick dump option moving on to the side here um so like i said you can either run it with or without a frame the shoulder straps will connect down through here through these holes and they are just a, a loop sewn into the end you run it through and run the strap back through it there's other videos on that they're pretty good that's how i learned how to do it um, if you don't have the frame these will connect to these d-rings down here so that you can still use them like i said the large alice does not have that just the medium and then the pack has these straps here that adjust that you wrap around and hook to the inside of the frame as well to keep that secure those are just unused if you don't have the frame on it no bigs while we're on the outside um alice was an old system of connecting things through the side so you could put a canteen carrier here you could attach all kinds of different stuff that they had um, first aid pouches things like that so that's what these big loops are for so there's two there and a horizontal one there other side has two and a horizontal if you've seen my other videos you know I usually run a canteen carrier on the side you can use an old-school one or molly pouches actually will run through there they just don't fit as snug but on this Alice stuff, nothing fits as snug as Molly. So if you ever had Molly gear, it's kind of spoiled. Um, on the bottom, there are also two loops. And this stuff is really heavy, heavy, heavy sewn. So, and I've tied, I've wrenched on them and not ripped them out of there. Um, two drain holes. These are sewn across the bottom. But this is where you tie your bedroll. So you could run 550 cord through here, do Canadian jam knots and wrench down your blanket or your sleeping bag or whatever you wanted to put on the bottom, anything you wanted to put. As we come up, you can see the metal keepers for the straps that run the whole length of the bag. So a lot of guys or girls will take these straps and they'll get different straps and modify them and do a bunch of stuff. The reason I have not done that is I kind of like how this pack is one for the nostalgia the surplus stuff and two um, there's a reason it works so well it's still here and I don't really want to mess with that but these are extra extremely long straps um, so if you have this pack fully loaded out let's say that you have a bed roll on the top because you can do that as well then it gives you the extra length to be able to carry more gear and more crap up here um, and that was the idea for soldiers and people that were using these so I keep the metal book keepers because I like them because they're really robust but if you have extra what I've done is after you tighten them onto the bag and wrench everything up in there I'll just take that strap run it up and then kind of fold it back through loosely just to kind of keep it from flapping too much and then you want to take it apart pull it out push the little tab down there and they come out so something else um, these straps used to have a stopper on the end that would keep them from coming off like a double stitched piece that was a uh, thicker and it would keep it from coming out of there I didn't want that because I didn't like how you would loosen it and then have to fold the strap around the pack so and so they kind of come like that sometimes the guys did them in the field but I cut it off at a 45 degree angle to make it easier to put back through there and then just burnt the end which looks like I need to redo this one to keep it from fraying so you can do that to yours if you want it may already be like that or you may find them with or without the uh, stopper on the end you can do that as you you wish because normally it would stop about there 
and then to get into the main part of the pack you had to lift and pull it back I just like to uh, completely pull it out of there and then that way I could throw it over and get into the pack cooking right along here talking about getting into the pack we'll go ahead and open the lid here so the lid actually has a very water it's supposed to be water resistant inside a lot of these are rotted out because they were a rubber coating when I bought this it had this um, replacement cover that you can buy and it was already sewn in if yours is all cracking and splitting um, which it probably is because they're getting old now you can scrape all that loose stuff off get one of these and then have it sewn on there some people do flex seal tape on there but I or paint I tried to do that on another one and it did not turn out well so yeah we're I don't I don't I don't recommend that probably didn't do it right so getting into here there's a little velcro pouch and you can reach in there and put stuff now if you fold it right and stuff it right you can get rain gear in there you can put a poncho in there um, you can put flashlights headlamps whatever you would want to put that you can get to without undoing the pack or you know that you don't want in one of your little side pockets I usually keep a poncho in there it fills the whole thing and then that way if it does rain on it it's kind of got a waterproof lid almost to kind of shed some of that rain off but that's that's completely up to you opening the lid come inside there's 550 cord and a stopper here that's your adjuster to snug your pack down there's also a ring of the Alice loops around the side and you'll notice it has the little eyelets that was there used to be an attachment for uh, e-tool or um, machete and it had these little metal clips that would clip in there and then you could run the length of it behind these pouches like I showed you with the axe so don't really use those anymore but these loops are nice you can put pouches up here if you really want to or you can hang different things sometimes I'll put a, my carabiner with my gloves through there or hang my kooksa from there so we open it up and I have some things in here just to fill it out. Don't worry about my clothing. So, hopefully you can see in there. They're pretty good size. I think it's something like 30, 35 liters is what they're supposed to be. Um, you'll notice on mine, they're used to, on if you've ever seen one, they have a radio pouch in here. And it was to carry like a Syngar's radio in there. And there was an adjustment strap. I recently just did this because I would always just tighten the strap up and push it out of the way and I was basically I never used it ever 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 I never separated because if you put something in there it like fell down into the bag and kind of took up a lot of room so I just kept it snug out of the way and I never used it so I saw another video and the guy said turn it inside out and cut it out of there and I did that and I'm glad that I did so the radio pouch is gone it it runs now your angle looks like runs down through here and I cut it out so maybe sacrilege for some people I never used it and it just was in my way so sorry but yeah it's just a big open dump sack kind of compartment which I think is great and then you have the 550 cord to adjust it and snug it snug it down and then your little keeper goes up and it locks and then if you want to unlock it you pull it down and it blows open so these packs are a uh, nylon they come in different colors usually OD green the older ones um, and then the BDU woodland or M81 camo I like the camo because if you've seen a lot of my stuff I like that that pattern it's what I wore when I first came in because I'm old um, so it's maybe that's the nostalgia again but I really like this bag um, a lot of people will shy away from them because of the weight of them because they are pretty heavy speaking for what bags weigh now but they're just tough. I mean, they just, you just can't hardly beat them. You, I've got some little nicks and stuff in the bottom here, but it's nothing's all the way through. If you tear anything here on these pockets, you can just sew them back up real quick with any kind of little sewing kit that you'd have with you. Everything's pretty robust stitched anyway from the factory when they were made. I mean, some of these packs are 70 or 60 years old, so they're still kicking. But yeah, that is the basics of the Alice pack. Oh, hi. So putting these back through, I talked about them having the tabs. 
you do have to fish them back through but if you make the point on them like i said it makes it easier and then you pull them up um i'm gonna show you this stuff is it's just so tough um, with all the metal and no zippers and very very little hardware type stuff so you can take them and you can wrench on them you're not gonna hurt them that keeps it all secured so So you find these a lot of places, a lot of times on eBay, um, and price is going to vary. If you have the, if you get the frame with it, it's obviously going to be more. I usually see the actual genuine surplus frames going for probably around 80 bucks, 80 to 100. Um, you be careful because the aftermarket ones don't have as good of um, welds or rivets, and I guess they tend to break with heavy loads in them. I've never had one. I've been fortunate enough to have actual surplus frames. But like I said, with the medium, you don't need a frame. The large Alice, you would. The medium, you don't have to have a frame. The one thing, I just grabbed it, that I don't like about these is they don't come with any grab handle on the top. So you'd have to grab it by the strap. And it drove me nuts. I wove one at a paracord onto the frame. So if I take the frame off, I don't have the grab handle. But it's this is a the only thing I don't like about these. Other than the fact they're heavy, but you kind of get over that. So these I can pick up. I've seen them. I saw them actually today. I went 35 bucks for an Alice pack for an assortment of them. That was large and medium, but that's at my local store. So they're probably going to be different depending on where you're at. And if you hunt around, you can find them. So I have two because I'm a dork. Um, you don't need two though. So pick one of these up if you want, if you have any questions. Let me know. Like I said, you can get them online. Get them local. Local, you can check them out. Um, do a once over on them, see if anything's torn. And take out some military surplus that you can probably give to your kids and beat up and not spend $200 on a bag that may be lightweight, but you're probably going to wear through it, which I have. I just keep going back to this one, though. So thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully, I'll have a trip soon. I really, 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 really want to get an overnight in. Um, even though it's been like lows in the single digits, but yeah, it's been way too long. Way, 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 way too long. So I will catch you guys next time.